At the beginning of everything, the one eternal God could not keep his glory-giving love contained, and creation was born. An incomprehensibly awesome universe spins into existence, galaxies, time, atoms, and solar systems. And the crowning jewel on creation is humanity, to carry God's image into the world, to nurture, protect, and shape its beauty while being uniquely free to respond to God's love. That would have been wonderful, but humanity used its freedom to turn away and our love failed, rejecting the Creator's good order and saying yes to a deception that caused everything and everyone to crack. But when death enters the story, so does God's mercy. Addressing the evil one directly, God starts speaking of someone, the hero of heaven and humanity that will come to deal with the snake. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. Our first whisper of someone who will be wounded himself in the fight to crush evil. Later in God's great rescue plan for creation, he calls a childless elderly man named Abraham and gives him a promise. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will bless. God is rebuilding humanity through someone. Then Abraham's great-grandson Judah received from God a blessing that someone is coming who will be a great king to rule over the whole of creation like God. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from his descendants, until the coming of the one to whom it belongs, the one whom all nations will honor. generations they wait as they struggle through slavery and exodus. Moses comes to deliver God's people. Could he be the one? As towering as Moses is, even he falls short, all the while declaring that the promised king is still coming. I see him, but not now. I behold him. Though they were warned of taking things into their own hands, the people ask for a king and create a man-made sad attempt of a savior who is just as flawed as the people he leads. But the Creator doesn't quit on his people that refuse to trust him. God finds a young man named David, who in spite of his sin is a good king, rules well, and his greatness grows to legendary tales. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever. Could this be the one we have waited for? But David starts outlining someone else in his prayers, songs, and poems a messenger from the Lord of heaven and earth that will suffer in a very particular way, a public way. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults. David speaks of someone, a person that endures death but finds life on the other side. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Over centuries, things grow darker. King after king is a failure, full of pride and hungry for power, oppressing their people, turning to foreign gods, rejecting the poor, the immigrant, the fatherless, and the widow. Only a radical few remember the promise of the one who is coming. For to us a child is born, to us a son is Israel spirals out of control, but this promise of the king from David's line just won't go away. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots. People forget God's name, but this one will be like God, walking among them. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be He is given a title of Messiah, or anointed one, like a great king of old, a high priest in the temple, or a prophet of God. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me. He will approach Jerusalem in peace, as her mighty king. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout. The promises won't quit about who will come from heaven to make the world right. He will be a shepherd for his people. My servant David will be king over them. A servant of God who will be mighty. Here is my servant. Who 
and a servant who would suffer. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed. How could that be possible? A conquering king and suffering servant? Expectation grows and grows. People call out for the great king. Prophets announce his arrival. God says he will come through. And then, for 430 years, silence.